Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. Well, I've had my Kearney and Trekker 2HL horizontal milling machine for about two and a half years now. And now that I have the universal head working, you know, 100%, at least as much as I'm going to be able to get to 100%, I want to now take uh, the next steps of what I want to be able to do to this machine so that I can use it for what I want to be able to use it for. In a previous series of videos, I used the machine along with the Brown and Sharp dividing head to machine a spline shaft for the universal head. The dividing head makes it easy to divide a piece of material into a set number of segments by using these indexing plates. But if you don't have the correct index plate or you don't have the differential gear train, you can't cut gear configurations like 127 tooth gear that you might use in a metric conversion. Well, the other thing you can use a dividing head for is to cut helical gears, but of course that requires some specialized adapters for the milling machine. And if you watch Keith Rucker's videos, as I'm sure most of you do, you may have seen this device that he has here on the end of his horizontal mill, which is the low lead attachment. Now what this attachment does is it synchronizes the motion of the table with the rotation of the dividing head and that allows him to cut helical gears using a mechanical mechanism. Well I had the thought one day while watching a video on Cloud 42's electronic lead screw could I do something similar for a dividing head do some sort of uh, digital link between the table movement and the dividing head. Well, my first thought was I could do the same thing that James is doing, and that is put a rotary encoder on the table lead screw and then a stepper motor on the dividing head. But then there's the issue with backlash and everything else in the screw. And I thought, well, couldn't the input just be like a DRO scale instead? And that eliminates all of the backlash problems and everything else associated with it. So I started thinking about this a little bit more and you know I'm a software engineer by trade so would it be that difficult to adapt what James is doing and just write my own code and maybe my own interfaces to a DRO to be able to link a DRO scale to a stepper motor. And then one day I come across a video on Rotary SMP's YouTube channel and he's showing this DRO that is somewhat of a home-built DRO and that he's got the scale linked to a stepper motor and I'm like okay I guess somebody else thought about this before I did I need to learn more about this now this particular project is from the mind of Stefano Bertelli and in Mark's video he links to Stefano's Instagram page as well as the GitHub repositories for the different parts of this project. So I ended up reaching out to Stefano, getting in contact with him and trying to learn a little bit more about the project. It is based on a Raspberry Pi microcomputer and all of the software and even the custom circuit boards that he's developed, he's open sourced, which means all of the software is free to download. All of the circuit diagrams are free to download. You can buy pre-made circuit boards from Stefano or you can make them yourself. Well, I decided to go ahead and get as much as I could from Stefano as I could. He even provided some uh, STL files that you can use to 3D print the cases. So this first video here of my version of Stefano's open source DRO is going to kind of walk through some of the steps that I went through to get this up and running. Well, these are the four main components to this DRO. And it starts with this microcomputer. This is a 
Raspberry Pi 4B microcomputer. It's a quad core microprocessor. It's got built in Wi Fi, Bluetooth, uh, HDMI display, it's got USB, it's got audio on board, it's got Ethernet jack, and you load the operating system through an SD card. Well, this next piece is just a seven inch LCD touchscreen. Uh, this is designed to be used with the Raspberry Pi computer. Well, this is one of two custom circuit boards that Stefano produces and also provides the circuit diagrams for. This is the power hat. This provides a power input that powers everything inside the case here as well as has the RS-485 input from the encoder board. This is the aforementioned encoder board. This has four different encoder inputs. Now these could be linear encoders like a DRO scale but they could also be a rotary encoder like something you would use for an electronic lead screw. It's got power input as well as the RS-485 uh, outputs, and it also has outputs to drive a stepper motor. Well, besides the 3D printed case and some wires, that's really all there is to this DRO. And so now all I need to do is I can start putting it together. I wanna start by mounting the computer to the back of the display board. Now the display board has four built-in standoffs that you can use to screw the Raspberry Pi to the back of it. But because I need to also add the power hat, I'm going to mount it to the display board using more standoffs. Now the display board comes with some adapters that make it easy to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. This one right here plugs into one of the USB outlets and that then plugs into a USB input on the display board. And this provides power to the display board as well as some touchscreen functionality. This next adapter is essentially a very, very short HDMI cable. It connects the HDMI output on the Raspberry Pi to the input of the display. Well, the next thing is to install the power hat on top of the Raspberry Pi. It's got these pins on it that connect all the necessary signals between the power hat and the Raspberry Pi. Well, amongst the files on Stefano's GitHub repository are the 3D model files for this case. I'll start by mounting the display with the Raspberry Pi and the power hat into the front bezel. Now one change I made to the assembly of my case is I use these heat set threaded inserts. Uh, instead of using machine screws, you can use some self tapping machine screws and it works just as well. Now to hold the display into the bezel, there's these tabs, which are also included amongst the 3D printer files that are used to secure the display to the front bezel. Well, next I'll install the main body of the case and it's just held onto the front bezel with four screws. And then the rotary controller and the encoder board here mounts to the body of the case with four more screws. Now to supply power to the DRO, I bought this super cheap uh, DC power supply off of Amazon here. It's just a 12 volt, three amp power supply.
Now I do need to apply power to both the power hat, which provides power to the Raspberry Pi and the display, as well as that rotary encoder board. So I bought these connectors again off of the Amazons and I'm just gonna solder some wires onto it that will then let me apply power to each of those circuit boards. And then our little 12 volt power supply will plug into that. Well, everything seems to be fitting in the case nicely, but we still have a little bit more work to do. And for some of that, we actually need to go over to the computer. Now, when Stefano sent me the Raspberry Pi, he included a version of the DRO software on the SD card. But I wanted to make sure that I had the most recent updated version. So I've gone out to his GitHub repository and I've downloaded the more recent version of the DRO operating system. Well, to load the operating system onto the Raspberry Pi, it's actually fairly straightforward. There's a free piece of software that you download the Raspberry Pi imager in which you just choose the file that you've downloaded. And then there's some settings that you have to configure for the Raspberry Pi and it writes it out to the SD card. And once it's on the SD card, you just need to slide it into the SD card slot on the Raspberry Pi. It's a little bit tricky to get to it once it's all assembled, but it's doable. Now, the other thing I wanted to do was to flash the system on the rotary controller encoder board. And that's a little bit more of an involved process and requires a special adapter but I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here on how that's done. Uh, Stefano is working on some more documentation on his GitHub repo so I would look there for a little more detailed explanation of what I'm doing here and this is just updating this board to the latest version of the firmware. Well, with all the software now up to date, I can go ahead and turn this thing on and let's see what we get. I have also plugged in a DRO scale to one of the inputs. Well, everything's looking good so far. And if I manually move the reader on the DRO scale, you can see some movement here on one of the axes. Now it is reading a little bit more than it should. I'm pretty sure I didn't move it 240 inches. Well, but since this thing is configurable for a number of different inputs, what I need to do is change the parameters of the scale and set it so it understands it's using a five micron glass scale. And now once I've set that, yeah, that's a little bit more like it Moving it about an inch gives me an inch on the screen. Now I'm not going to go over all the details of the DRO and its operation in this video, partly because I'm not ready to do that, but also because this is rapidly changing software. Stefano's working on this constantly and new features and new fixes are being uploaded to the repository every day. But what I do want to do now is I want to work on getting this scale mounted to the table of the Kearney and Trekker. Well, mounting the scale to the table of the KT is fairly straightforward. I just needed to tap a couple of holes and mount it. Now, mounting the reader head to the saddle is a little bit different. It's going to take a little bit more effort.
Now, one thing I will note is I was making some of these parts. I did make some of these mounting holes slotted, and that just provides the necessary adjustability. Well, you can see here I have the reader head mounted to the saddle and the scale on the table, and everything seems to be working pretty good so far. Well, I did do some rudimentary tests here with the dial on the uh, table crank as well as using a dial indicator on the table itself. And from what I can see here, the scale is reading to the tenth. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out so far. Now I know it might have seemed like it took a lot to get where I'm at right now, but really it's not that bad if you look at it in smaller steps. And I hope to go into some more detail in future videos. But for now, I think I'm going to have to cut this one off here. Well, there's still a lot to do with this. So if you want to see how this progresses, hit that subscribe button, like it if you like the video, leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.